I want to circle the wagons back just a little bit and talk about inhaled corticosteroids because they're out there in the community. Everybody knows about them. They're, they're prescribed a lot. Uh, is there a role in COPD management for uh, inhaled corticosteroids or is it just for asthma? And what are the guidelines now saying, for example, FLAME, mm -hmm. which is a set of guidelines, uh, about, about inhaled corticosteroids? Well, the role until we discuss in a few moments the triples uh, is uh, being diminished by two pivotal studies. Flame was a head-to-head -head comparison, first non-inferior and then superior uh, on the, uh, the prioritization of uh, uh, serotide, which is the, the British Advair, uh, 500 over 50, uh, and uh, uh, Ultibron, uh, in Indicatorol plus glycoperonium. And uh, the Lava Lama was more effective at reducing all exacerbations, including moderate and severe, uh, and then uh, the, uh, the ICS lava. So that was a, a sort of against the, the, the grain. We did know that llamas were pretty effective. Teotropium has an indication against exacerbations. But this study really quite a, kind of put it uh, that it was actually superior. And that would enable you to reduce the risk of pneumonia, perhaps by reducing the steroid. The second study was that about uh, a great many severe patients and others are on triple therapy, a lava llama ICS. And that was the withdrawal of the ICS, and then they, they wanted to know, how did you do? Well, it turns out that they did pretty darn well. There was no escalation in exacerbations by retaking away the steroid, but there was some loss of lung function. It was 40 mLs. However, subgroup studies were done. This is where those that had 3 and 4 percent peripheral eosinophils, or a total count of around 300, they had trouble. So that brought us back into then that eosinophil uh, question that Frank just uh, has just raised. Yeah, I want to come back to eosinophils, but when you are talking about non-inferiority studies and then superiority studies, uh, this, doesn't, this doesn't really make ice, inhaled corticosteroids look very good. I mean, and in fact, you, you pointed out there's some morbidity right. to corticosteroids. So what do you do when a patient comes to you already on triple therapy. Do you take them off the steroids? You know, I, I don't too much. Uh, the triple therapy is, uh, you know, someone comes in and one of the principles of being a doctor for many years is that uh, when the therapy comes in, patient comes in, you sort of leave them alone if they're doing pretty darn good. And that, that's not a bad, uh, that's a pretty good policy to follow. What about, what, what's this wisdom trial? Well, the wisdom trial was a study where uh, people who were on triple therapy, LABA, LAMA, ICS, were weaned off the ICS. And it was an excellent study, had a, a big number of patients uh, with an adequate time coming off the, the treatment for 52 weeks. And what it showed is very interesting, there was no increase in exacerbations in people who were, uh, the steroid was discontinued versus those who stayed on triple. But there, when they did subgroup analysis, it turns out that the patients that had 3 and 4 percent peripheral eosinophils, or a total of 300 per cells per uh, cubic millimeter, were, uh, had more exacerbations. So clearly, uh, withdrawing from triple therapy down to double uh, sh could be tried and probably should be tried, but not everyone is going to flourish. And maybe some of the points that Frank made about that allergic eosinophilic group, one would be cautious. I, I have been avoiding this eosinophilic issue until right now. Okay. And I've been saying, wait, 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 we're going to come to it. Here we are. What the heck is going on? Why do these guys, some, some guys in a subgroup and women, have eosinophilia, and what is that telling you? Well, let me make a couple of comments, Tim. There's one comment that we, that we have to understand is that the, the role of ICS is evolving. Yeah. And, and you know, there, there's one large study that just read out that showed that the ICS actually did pretty well. Uh, there's another large study that's ongoing that's testing two different doses of combination inhaled steroids. And so I think part of what we've realized is that steroids have been overused. I think all of us uh, accept that that's correct. Uh, and so all of us are now in a, in a quandary trying to figure out, all right, so if they're overused, when are we going to use them and when are we not going to use them? And so I think that there are some components that are very practical, and that is if I come to see you, Sherba, and I'm, again, your COPD patient, and I had a pneumonia on my inhaled steroid three months ago, and I'm doing pretty well now, would you consider an ICS withdrawal in that setting? I would because there's a, that's clearly a risk factor that's associated with inhaled corticosteroids. If I had significant osteoporosis, would you have concerns regarding keeping an inhaled corticosteroid long term? 
I'd have to have a good reason to continue it. So Sherba is synthesizing information regarding risk benefit, realizing that there is some risk involved. And so we clearly now have a sense, I think I, they're shaking their heads as well Absolutely. for all of us out there. All of us, yeah. uh, and so I think all of us realize that we start personalizing those com combinations and therapeutic approaches, and they're making decisions based on some of the risk components.